So I'm sitting on this exam room table and I'm, uh, it's the university training clinic and it's where all of the injured student athletes go. And I, uh, my arm is hurting so badly. I have pain radiating from my shoulder to my fingertips. I can't actually lift my arm past my midline. So that meant that things like washing my hair had been a little bit out of the question uh, for the past few days. The doctor's coming towards me and he's holding my MRIs and my x-rays and he says, I'm sorry, you have to quit swimming. So I don't really trust doctors to begin with, uh, but I certainly don't trust this guy that's telling me I have to quit everything that I had known up until college at that point. These were my only friends. Uh, this was the only way I spent my time. I was in the water 20 hours a week, let alone all the time running and lifting and hanging out again with the only friends I had. And um, I'm pretty pissed off. The whole thing feels a little bit out of my control. And I, I'm a control person. I don't need control in like every aspect of my life, except that that's a dirty lie and yes I do. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I decide I need to take control. I need to figure out something to do that doesn't involve my shoulder, for sure. And so I signed up to bike across the United States. So to be clear, I knew that biking across America would be tough. There was going to be mountains and deserts and hills, for sure. I had actually, at this point, had never seen a mountain. I grew up in South Florida. Everything's pretty flat there. I heard that they were big. I figured it'd be one of those cross that bridge when you get to it kind of kind of situations. Um, so I didn't train, which is like not entirely true because I rode that brand new bike three times before I set off to bike 4,000 miles from Baltimore to San Francisco. The trip is ripe for a crisis, and this becomes so clear to me on the second day of the trip, which is the first day of the Appalachians which uh, for those of you who maybe were like me, those are Appalachian mountains, and uh, they're not like small hills where the hobbits live. They are, they are real. Uh, so we started the day the way that we would every day for the next two months. We had a group of 28 riders, and we paired off in groups of four to six, and so I find, I find the people that I'd biked with the day before, they're about similar speed. I figure this will be my group, this is gonna be my jam. We start the day with unearned optimism. It does not last long. Uh, it's 107 degrees, and it's in the middle of the day, and I am walking my bike up the side of a mountain. I'm, I'm walking it because I didn't train to bike it. Um, and I'm also crying <laughs> hysterically. And I call my dad, and I say to him, I'm like, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this. And he says, well, I'm, I'm not picking you up in Appalachia. So I actually don't know what the so was because I hung up on that bastard. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I eventually walk quickly enough that I catch up with the rest of my group and they're all walking too. Not a single one of them is crying, but they are all walking their bikes. It takes us a long time to finish the day. And despite our very synchronized start time, the groups had, uh, had a very staggered finish. The fastest group had finished nearly three hours before um, my group. So uh, the, the, the group leaders, they decide this isn't gonna work. We're going to do something about it. And the next day, they distributed the riders. So they distributed some of the more skilled riders with some of the more me-type riders. And in my group is this tall, like kind of thin, super know-it-all guy. And he's a very good cyclist. Um, and he very much did not want to be in this group of mine. And that's fine. I just kind of pretended not to notice the like folded arms and only talking to the fast people at breakfast. But we... <laughs> We, we huddle up, we start the third day, and we're talking, and you know, I am actually having a bit of a crisis of faith. I chose to do this, and I don't know that I actually can. And I reference to the group how I had to walk my bike the day before, and the know-it-all, he turns to me and he says, you're gonna bike the mountains today. And I, I just kinda like laugh, because no. And, um, <laughs> and he says to me, no, no, you're going to bike them and you're not going to get off your bike. You're not going to break hard. You're not going to quit because if you do, you're going to crash into me because I'm going to be riding three inches behind your back tire. So a very good cyclist. And um, for like some context, he did not have to buy those squishy shorts like two weeks before this trip started. And he, uh, he had gone on more rides in the last week than I had in ever. And um, we, we start the day, we hit the bottom of the first mountain, and he does, he falls in line three inches behind me. So I don't really have a choice. I, I 
don't get off my bike. My legs hurt so bad. They, I mean, I, I was not in shape to bike up a mountain. And I'm crying, and there's, like, tears and snot just, like, everywhere. And I'm a very quiet weeper, so I'm pretty sure, pretty sure this guy didn't know about it. Um, it takes us a very long time to get to the top, but we do get to the top, and we clip out from the bikes, and we look down, very far away down, and he says to me, you did it. And I did. I did bike up that mountain, but I did it with support. And despite my um, previously mentioned controlling qualities, that was actually okay. And this know-it-all starts to look a little bit less like a know-it-all and a little bit more like someone I'm trying to make out with. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we do. We, we get to the making out. That, that, that goes on for the summer. That's, that, that hit a stride. That was great. But the thing that was really great was me starting to kind of unsuck as a cyclist. Um, and, you know, he had to ride behind me on quite a few more mountains before we got to that point. But I was able to accept that support in a way that I really wasn't able to before. And then in turn, again, I've, I've started to unsuck at this point, and I am able to offer that same support to some of my friends. Uh, some of those times of support were things on, like, the Rocky Mountains, which are super big. Um, again, hadn't seen a mountain before. You should have seen my face. I was just like, what? Um, there was also these times in the desert where we would be biking like vertically, but it was like a breath of fresh air because um, otherwise we'd be biking on the surface of the sun that is the, the state of Utah. Uh, 4,000 miles I biked without a crisis. I didn't even fall off my bike. In fact, the only time I fell had nothing to do with cycling at all. We were, in a, we were at a university that was hosting our, our big group of cyclists and um, we were in a dorm room, and uh, I, had my, I had my know it all in there. And we are on a bunk bed because dorm room, and, and we're doing it. And it is going great. <laughs> it's going really well. Everyone's having a good time involved until I fall off the top of the bunk bed <laughs> with him still inside of me. <laughs> Luckily, we'd kind of gotten that support each other thing down pat. So even though it was a, it was a little bit of a crisis moment, but we, we got through it because that's the thing, right? That's how you get through a crisis. That's how you manage a disappointment. That's how you deal with almost breaking your boyfriend's penis. You do it with support. You, you don't have to do it alone. Um, you guys do not have to bike 4,000 miles to figure that out either, but some of us need a steeper learning curve. Thank you.